In late 1944, Germany was in such a desperate military situation that the German government set up a national militia, the Volkssturm. It was staffed by conscripting males between the ages of 16 and 60 years who were not already serving in some military unit. The Volkssturm comprised one of the final components of the total war concept a part of an endeavor to overcome the enemy's military strength through the force of will. Volkssturm units fought unsuccessful battles against the Allied units until the end of the war. Typically, members of the Volkssturm received only very basic military training. It included a beef indoctrination and training on the use of the weapons such as the Panzerfaust. Because of continuous fighting and weapon shortages, weapon training was often minimal. There was no standardization of any kind and units were issued only what equipment was available. This was true of every form of equipment. This resulted in the units looking very ragged and instead of boosting civilian morale, it often reminded people of Germany's desperate state. But Germany had also developed cheap but effective Volkssturm weapons, such as a less ditch effort to stop the Allied armies. Under conditions of depleted manpower and limited available production capacities, the Primitive Waffen Program or Primitive Weapons Program was initiated. It called for weapons that were as easy as possible to produce. Probably the most exotic weapon of the program was the Einstoss Flammenwerfer 46, a handheld single shot flamethrower designed in Germany during the second half of the war. It was introduced in late 1944 and it was engineered to be both cheap and easily mass-produced. The disposable weapon fired a half-second burst of flame up to 27 meters. Originally, this weapon was designed as a portable flamethrower of the paratroopers of the Luftwaffe but due to the critical military situation in 1945, this weapon, which was easy to produce, was made available to infantry units of the Volkssturm. Although flamethrowers have proven their psychological and tactical effectiveness in certain combat missions since World War I, the weight and therefore the mobility as well as the visibility of the operator who becomes a priority target for the enemy has limited their use. This flamethrower consists of 1.7 liter cylinder tank filled with a mixture of petrol and propellant liquid under pressure. With a 9 minute diameter nozzle and a pistol grip on the front of the cylinder. The weapon weighed 3.6 kilograms and throws a burst of flame in less than a second at a useful range of approximately 27 meters. About 30,000 copies were produced from October of 1944. A small number were probably used in combat by the Volkssturm and regular units during the Battle of Berlin in the spring of 1945. Next came the Volkssturmgewehr or the People's Storm Rifle. It is the name of several rifle designs developed during the last months of the war. They share the common characteristics of being greatly simplified as an attempt to cope with severe lack of resources and industrial capacity in Germany during the final period of the war. Production occurred from January of 1945 till the end of the war and roughly 10,000s were made. The weapon employed the same intermediate cartridge as the earlier Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifle 
and also use the same detachable 30 round box magazine. Testing of captured Volkssturmgewehr at a Soviet shooting range showed that it was very inaccurate, with 50% of the shots at a 100 meter landing in a circle with a 10 cm radius. The MP or Machine Pistole 3008 was a German last-ditch submachine gun manufactured towards the end of World War II. Also known as the Volksmaschine Pistole or People's Machine Pistol. The weapon was closely based on the British Sten MK2 submachine gun except for its vertical magazine. The MP3008 was an emergency measure designed at a time when Germany was at the point of collapse. Desperately short of raw materials, the Germans sought to produce a radically cheap alternative to their standard submachine gun, the MP40. The MP3008 was a simply blowback design operating from an open bolt. It was crudely manufactured in small machine shops and variations were common. Typically, the magazine was button-mounted unlike the side-mounted stand. Initially, all steel without hand grips. The wire buttstock was welded to the frame and was typically triangular. However, the design changed as conditions inside Germany worsened and on final guns, wooden stocks and other variations were found. Last but not least came the Volkspistole or the People's Pistol. Due to the fragmentary record keeping in Germany in early 1945, the actual makers of this pistol are unknown. The main criteria set by the government were that the pistol could be assembled by minimally skilled workers, was to be chambered for the standard 9mm parabellum service cartridge, and that its construction consists of as little high-quality material as possible. The Volkspistole was fabricated primarily with stamped, brazed and welded sheet metal. Although the Volkspistole never achieved production, its various designers did explore new techniques and concepts that were put into practice following the war and helped set new stages for new generations of handguns. Many records and prototypes were destroyed with Germany's fall, but apparently three firms were involved in the project – Walter, Mauser and Gustloff. <laughs>